I would like to express my deep gratitude for the spirit of collaboration and cooperation and love that I've seen today among the priests and the clergy of Oma Bay. And it's a good sign that the church is growing and the church is also growing also in numbers. And I'm so delighted that within one year already has brought two or three more uh, religious groups coming to the diocese. The more they are, the better we are. And for us, we rejoice because the work becomes easier and appreciated by God. When it's done by many people, many groups, many other tribes, many other nationalities, the whole God's nation, God's people here. Yeah. And so we are delighted. So I think we are very happy that we can have our religious and our priests and our laity working together in solidarity. Of course, the reality is that there are challenges which we must live with. Whether you know it or not, in 1982, Pope John Paul II mandated me to begin the process of religious and perpetual health. Brothers, Congregation is a tough thing to raise, I tell you. But I must say that by the time of retiring, we were about 32 or so. So we're not reached 40 yet. But I think God's time is there and will be there. So I can appreciate what religious life is all about. Since I, was, I had to make a constitution, juridical constitution, spiritual constitution, and directives. Apart from that, now when you come to real life, Every day, everybody comes. So the challenge is not the religion. That's why what I want to get at here is the reality. The right now in Africa. What Pope Paul VI said in Uganda in 1969, that was say that Africa is high time you become missionaries to yourself. This is the reality that's come. We are now missionaries to ourselves. Although we send some also out. I just obeyed somebody here last time in Britain who are now working in Pakistan. But we are, we are missionaries to ourselves. So the first challenge that I see myself, even as a founder of a congregation, who actually, is the reality is that we have FSD and another. So the reality is that the reality is part and foremost. Our sustainability has been that fast to sustain the religious. We sometimes we tend to ignore them somewhere where they live there and live there and not part of them. No, they don't take interest in the religious. They are part of us. Whatever help you can give, whatever assistance you can offer them is all appreciated. But as that I don't mean just material things. The first thing I think that requires sustainability is also to promote, protect and safeguard the life of our religious sisters, our religious brothers, and religious priests. And that life, of course, will mean the spiritual life, of course, implying also the community life of the religious. And of course, not leaving out the intellectual life, but first and first and foremost, the spiritual life of all the religious. In that spiritual life, even we, the high and priests, we are part there. I think we must now team up, work together, and promote the religious. Whether you started it, whether you found it there, whether they found you there, don't leave them, don't abandon them. Be with them, help them, sustain them. Let them also enjoy the spiritual life as we come together in the Lord's faith to receive Holy Communion. And actually, you know, we are all as the Catechism says, everybody from Christian to what we are all knowing God and loving God and working for God and so that we may go to heaven. Isn't it? <laughs> now today I see heaven here. The people from here come, heaven free, sisters of all kinds, sixteen congregation, brothers, lady, yeah. Who who is missing? Everybody is here. <laughs> Okay, you don't go to heaven. You don't reach there. You just look like this as you are. So for me, I think that uh, I'm not a charismatic guy, but sometimes I just like to sing a song to 
to say that uh, this is what it is. So when I'm in heaven, what can we do? We can only thank God, isn't it? Akuna mungu kama wewe, akuna 